ladies and gentlemen i'd like to invite mr rehmatullah the executive director of the institute of research promotion he will deliver a welcome address please welcome mr rehmatullah bismillahir rahmanir rahim uh, i welcome all my senior delegates chief guest of today's session uh, to the summit and hopefully uh, abish rawani saab and dr manzoor somro will shed more light uh, with details on the summit i just like to set a tone for the summit uh, by sharing a very basic purpose of initiating this summit and uh, we are having almost 8 years of this journey let me start with a simple example that usa recently has passed the bill of uh, 100 billion uh, to maintain and sustain their technology leadership uh, particularly to compete with china all the experts and i have read almost 10 experts uh, uh, be briefing about this success or failure possible of this bill and unanimously all say that this bill will fail to make uh, usa compete china and the single reason highlighted in these analysis and article is usa is still focusing uh, on science creation to uh, to compete china whereas the competition has moved from science creation to science exploitation mostly europe and usa has failed to understand the new business rule of science and that is not a science creation it is a science exploitation and unfortunately pakistan is still stuck in science creation now the industries and corporations have started uh, deinvesting their university funds and investing in startups to reduce the time from idea to market because investing in startup buying a startup will quickly help the industries to materialize their gains and commercialize their technologies just few back japanese companies and uh, industries thought that they are no more getting a quick supply of innovation and technology from the universities so they pulled up the fund and they made a platform uh, to connect millions of startups all over the world now there is another breed of multinational they call technology platforms Uh, innovation summit is a similar a uh, technology platforms that will help the society and countries to exploit uh, the science and exploit the knowledge uh, together by connecting all the stakeholders and speeding up the process uh, of science commercialization so hopefully uh, thanks to all the partners who supported this summit in last 8 years and now we are having uh, online summit this emerge as a global summit and we will be growing as a global technology uh, platform for science commercialization and science exploitation so i request all of you to be part of this summit so we can also have a shift in pakistan uh, towards a science exploitation and uh, knowledge exploitation Uh, to meet the new realities of this world thank you very much now i'd like to invite professor abid hussain khan sharwani who's the chairman of the institute of research promotion and he's also the director general of the university of management and technology lahore he will deliver a welcome address please welcome professor dr abid sharwani i'm pleased to welcome you at this very first time online international innovation summit 2020 this innovation summit is a technology exchange platform where researchers scientists entrepreneurs educationists and displays government and private organization from different countries are coming together at one platform with a common mission and goal 
to build innovate innovation across the world and particular to the pakistan we all are here for a great dream of promoting innovation in pakistan and rest of the world your participation and contribution have made this summit the largest online technology and innovation show of the country this international innovation summit 2020 is a vibrant and dynamic platform that sports and stimulated collaborative co creation and open innovation all activities and programming elements conducted by for the country are to encourage sharing build across sector connections and attract like minded members participants researchers to contribute and to thrive under an entrepreneurial environment this is an initiative that fosters promotes and accelerates the commercialization of technology ventures through encouragement co-working co-sharing mentorship funding and strategic support such summits create an ideal environment for a new business development the world economies have experienced long term economic damages due to covid 19 pandemic and the deepest recession in the decade the economic damages provided a baseline forecast of 5.2% contraction in global gdp in this year and the losses in productivity aggregated demand personal income and trade are highly expected the scary vulnerabilities of the covid-19 have been triggered despite the serious efforts of the economies and hence the urgent policy actions are needed to reduce macro instability across the world this pandemic crisis has accelerated the pace of digital transformation with further expansion in e-commerce and increases in the pace of adoption of telemedicine video conferencing online teaching and fintech more than 1.5 billion students and youth across the planet are affected by school and university closure due to covid-19 higher education commission of pakistan has taken several initiatives for finding rapid solution against covid-19 it is has announced several call for proposal such as rapid research and innovation initiative for dealing with topics and issues of severe urgency about the availability of our access to data facilities our specialized equipment as well as quick response research on covid-19 the fact that covid-19 has changed the world and the earlier we realize in the earlier we shall be able to adjust to the new normal the new normal would be took for opportunities closure to home and in our region for economic growth and recovery rather than in the west while the western financial institution will continue to exert their influence we can look for out of the box initiatives in collaboration with china iran turkey and russia which can offset the economic downturn the basic concept of this initiative is to develop joint planning to ensure the economic and financial stability of pakistan 
but taking advantage of the guest strategic location geo strategic location on the globe for that the partners can mobilize the economic resources for mutual support in the key sectors like industry energy telecommunication human resources and information technology moreover the joint policy for economic cooperation should be out of the box solution agriculture is the main source of livelihood in pakistan during the covid-19 the exports and imports of food and agriculture products have been disrupted due to closed borders the first thing every country will need is food for its people therefore agri sector will be of the most important and of strategic nature <clears throat> pakistan not only plays a major role in this for other countries but also provide r and d to further develop this sector to cater for their needs ladies and gentlemen this summit brings many dynamic institution government offices and industries together for two days to understand each other and start join working the number of industry speakers will share industry perspectives to orient academics on how to link with the corporate sector the silent the salient features of innovation summit 2020 are virtual exhibition to buy and sell technologies there are a lot of technical sessions on branding of pakistan post covid technology transformation microelectronics technologies how science and technology parks drive cluster innovation and growth policy talks on entrepreneurship addressing the state science and society gap traditional medicine for covid-19 panel discussion on various topics including post covid uh, solution the policies and governance of special economic zone for economic revival and we in this conference we have some workshops as well on and network meetings with industry government non government high officials and politicians etc and we are very lucky and this is a blessing of covid 19 that we are now together at one platform from different countries and different regions and different continents as well professor henry is the president of triple helix international professor monela todiva patrick mcnamara dr elmadi dr chalini jim dedos engineer hafsa dr hasan nadim dr hoshekar dr tariq zaman dr rashid aftab from pakistan and many more scientists entrepreneurs industrialists politicians are participating in this first innovation summit 2020 online i would like to thank to all our summit partners because of these very very vibrant partners this conference cannot be held successfully there are a lot of partners including umt irp university of sialkot bahria university karachi bipa public policy institute jinnah university for women karachi economic operation organization science foundation ecosef led by dr manzoor sumru sahib innovative research universities center for policy analysis and development tech hub global youth foundation khyber pakhtunkhwa board of investment and trade online learn and small and medium enterprises development authorities mida and my very vibrant 
team of IRP led by Mr. Ramatullah and my Auric team led by Naveed and other fellows and my other fellows, they are working around the globe from different regions of Pakistan and different regions of the world as well. For their hard work and effort to make this summit successful, no doubt. I am confident that you will find new ideas, fresh energy and novel partnerships in this summit to sustain your effort in support of the SDGs and recovery from COVID-19. And by the grace of Almighty Allah, Pakistan is a blessed country which has overcome the effects of this COVID-19 and our economy is coming up as compared to our neighbor country, India, which is seven times largest to Pakistan, is suffering in a very bad shape. But we do hope that this pandemic will finish very soon from all over the world. And we offer to all of the world our best practices how to overcome this COVID-19. And I also congratulate the brave steps of our Prime Minister Imran Khan, who took many, many brave steps and to control and overcome this COVID-19. And that's why we are coming up. We are, our economy is shaping up in an incremental way. And this is a good practice and example for the rest of the world. Through this science and technology and innovation, we can overcome these pandemic effects and I wish you all a very successful webinar for two days. Let us repeat our promise and commitment to build Pakistan as an innovative country and the rest of the world as well. And I must congratulate again to all the participants and the speakers and the panelists to attending this conference and to make this conference in a success. Thank you very much. Wish you all the best. Now, I'd like to invite the chief guest for today, Senator Shari Rahman. Ms. Rahman is the parliamentary leader of Pakistan People's Party in Senate. She's the founding chair and serving president of Jinnah Institute, chair of the CPEC committee in Senate, and chair of Pakistan People's Party's Committee on Foreign Affairs. Please welcome Senator Shari Rahman. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum and good morning. To all of you, uh, first of all, let me take the opportunity to thank uh, the executive director of IRP, Dr. Rehmatullah, and Professor Dr. Muhammad Ali, the vice chancellor of Qaeda Azam University, uh, the Institute of Research and Promotion, and Beria University. Congratulations for hosting this really important summit uh, for innovation and uh, building a platform that links both industry, government, and the private sector, or rather all three uh, sectors together in uh, realizing Pakistan's potential for critical thinking, for uh, academic growth, and most importantly, for research innovation uh, and building linkages to uh, the private sector, as well as creating partnerships that will build not just capital, but uh, innovation in all fields. Now, very quickly, I want to say that uh, this is very important to my mind because both IRP and Beria University have been hosting such summits, I'm told. And these are the only few rare platforms that provide research linkages between academia and the industry to facilitate and to spur economic growth. Uh, and on its splendid success, I really uh, want to congratulate you all and felicit felicitate IRP and Beria University administrations 
for understanding the value of such an exercise. Um, as you know, today we are in a world where trade is totally dominated by the increasing growth of capital and consumer goods. Of course, supply chains matter, but everything is linked up right now to knowledge intensive uh, production. Uh, in that field, Pakistan is very sadly behind. I mean, we have just been exporting low value added goods and uh, even in textiles, it's been low value added uh, addition. And this is, a, this is a circle Pakistan has been stuck in for various reasons. We can get into some of those, but I think this is an innovation summit and let's kind of uh, place our limits on that kind of discussion. Um, why are we on a global innovation index at 113 out of 127 countries below the Ivory Coast, below Ethiopia, below Madagascar? I mean, this should actually uh, trigger critical thinking on why such uh, low investments in innovation and R&D have created no capital or uh, public sector or private sector platforms for serious research and innovation, and why it's only limited to a small startup youth-based tech culture today. This is something we need to uh, encourage and spur and foster in all fields. Specifically, I heard a speaker mentioning agriculture. It's critical. There's a Faisalabad Research Institute, uh, but we need to do way more than just depending on uh, new technologies in the conventional fields, we have to link them together and we have to work in uh, areas that will ensure food security as well as economic growth for our future. Now, um, you do see that India and China are at 62, 60 and 22 respectively on the innovation index. Um, and part of their success is uh, the encouragement, uh, the spending literally they do on uh, building research uh, departments and think tanks within research institutions, adding value to those and basically uh, encouraging them as part of state as, and private sector enterprise. I'll give you an example in India, for instance, think tanks are uh, created, are, are able to pretty much speak their minds in, in terms of critiquing government and holding um, platforms that uh, not just reach outside India, but uh, project economic soft power and as well as academic uh, uh, value. And what that ha how that happens is that they're provided literally, whether they're private sector or public, the bigger think tanks have provided a great deal of support and a great deal of even land and capital uh, so that they can encourage building human resource and capital here we have the opposite. Most of the INGOs and think tanks are discouraged. It is very hard to survive on private funding, uh, as you all know, because the knowledge field requires eats up money. Uh, and we are, we are losing even our uh, younger scholars to international think tanks, which are able to draw them with two very important uh, pulls. One is, of course, the ability to provide them a platform uh, and allow them to think critically and openly. And the second is to provide them funding and a, and a space, a perch from where they feel they can uh, confidently take forward their projects and build on whatever knowledge they have gained in their academic institutions. Now, lack of entrepreneurship and lack of capital is one of the key uh, deficits that Pakistan faces in innovation. And uh, even as far as CPEC is concerned, you see the COVID-19 crisis hit, hit the whole world. What is going to take the world out of such a crisis uh, that, uh, that befalls all of humanity? And that's epical and it makes us think of where uh, humanity stands when confronted with such huge what I call black swan events, which were not anticipated. However, the one thing that can combat and, and find a uh, link uh, human progress with innovation is, is this. When you're faced with a crisis, 
necessity, they say, is the mother of invention. And these innovations are coming from all over the world, the, the need for a policy. So in conclusion, I'm just going to say, what are the three things we need to do? Um, in academia, we need to encourage critical thinking. So I think that's a fairly um, uh, silver bullet kind of takeaway, but it has long implications and it needs engagement with the state. It, need, it needs engagement with the public se sector in framing curriculum. You can't have a knowledge apartheid running through the country, but you must encourage um, what are known as uh, fields of knowledge and hubs of uh, critical thinking and activity within big universities that can afford to house what they call non-project related um, critical thinking projects. So think tanks that are not really, not just not linked to a particular project have to be encouraged because research always is uh, and must need openness and research must need uh, research needs comfort it must have its need which is an open uh, environment and the funding it so critically needs for uh, going forward what can the public sector do it must provide that framework it must provide an enabling environment it must encourage links between um, uh, in the private sector, academia, and the public sector. So the working in silos and boxes has got to stop. Uh, and our ability to frame uh, uh, knowledge uh, capsules that will link to production, that will link to spurring economic growth is very important, which is where the private sector thirdly comes in. It is the only really engine of uh, sputtering growth in Pakistan. And it, it must go beyond the 2% or a 2.1%. We're projecting it must go beyond uh, the weak base it is working on, uh, both capital and human resource. And we must develop the skills technology. This is, for instance, why we are not able to connect all the dots or uh, capitalize on the huge opportunities available in the world today. There are many... Uh, economies that have shrunk over COVID, we, are, we should have been able to take their place, but we are not innovating. We are not economically and politically agile to uh, make quick decisions. And this is very important. Uh, so the private sector must feel that it, is, it, that it, it has contractual uh, protections. It, has, it won't be told it can't do this. And the, uh, the culture of arbitrary uh, policy frameworks must end. There must be predictability for growth environments. And then the private sector must be the engine for innovation. It is entirely that way the world over. I mean, with the exception of the Soviet Union at one point, and of course, China. But uh, our experiments with the public sector have proven that they're unwieldy. They become big public behemoths. Uh, and they kind of suck up capital in ways that we are uh, that leave everyone mystified. So the so the the housing of innovation is ultimately really going to be in the private sector, which must be encouraged, which must be spurred, and which must draw on uh, human skill training and resource from uh, the uh, academy, the universities, and work with uh, strong link with linkages. They must fund innovation and research in these uh, uh, academies and build a firm knowledge base from which students of your universities uh, and can benefit from such summits and from the enterprise that they can generate after that. Uh, lastly, I'm just going to say thank you um, again and to congratulate all the students who are actually going to profit from this summit and from the two days of intensive uh, thought leadership that you're all going to bring to it. It's very important, uh, all students, I want to say, to dream. Uh, without dreaming, you will not innovate. Without innovation, you will not create excellence or leadership in the fields that you are looking mm -hmm. to excel in. This is the message from all the big economies of the world. The United States was a, was, is, has become a global leader, has held the field has dominated innovation and its economy has grown because of the important links between big capital, 
between in, uh, innovators and of course the public sector which then provides a huge enabling uh, engine for those innovations how electricity was laid how uh, how turbines were created uh, you might want to look at some research documentaries for inspiration but uh, innovation is at the heart of it china is now catching up it is the largest economy in purchasing power capacity so these two economies are two different models that have invested in research and development uh, in many sectors and now of course fintech and technology and start the startup economy the digital world is the future big data has both sinister and other implications but it is certainly the field and the way forward that needs to be exploited i'm very very confident that pakistani students are some of the best when given opportunities uh, and will innovate in some of the most challenging conditions so i congratulate you all once again and hope and look forward to seeing pakistan at the knowledge edge of this very important field thank you very much for giving me this opportunity please welcome professor dr manzoor husain somro uh honorable senator sherry rahman thank you very much for your words of wisdom uh distinguished delegates scientists technologists and dear colleagues assalamu alaikum and very good morning to you uh it is a real pleasure for me to be part of this innovation summit and i would like to congratulate participating organizations for uh being part of this innovation summit uh which is uh, as abhi sahab said the first ever our virtual innovation summit and i would like to express my special gratitude to the leadership of uh, institute of research promotion abhi shirwani and of course uh, the executive director uh, our very good friend ramatullah for uh, uh consistently uh, promoting the initiative and the remarkable efforts for coming together and organizing this uh, major event uh, i feel pleased and uh, proud that innovation summit has grown from an idea to pakistan's probably the largest r&d promotion network today uh, and i am also pleased to have been one of the three pioneer uh, should i say musketeers who initiated the program and uh, the true credit goes to chairman of irp uh, professor abid shirwani saab who came to me with the idea uh, and we both then met the then vice chancellor of the university of punjab professor mujahid kamran and we agreed to launch the program uh, starting from lahore and uh, then the rest is the history uh, we are uh, international today and uh, uh, doing lot many things uh, starting from uh, uh, the uh, i mean engaging the school children as well as uh, university students and the industry but also the policy makers and i am so grateful Uh, so pleased that uh, senator uh, sheri rahman uh, has been with us and uh, we heard her words of wisdom uh, and that actually reminded me as a school student when i used to listen to the speeches of uh, uh, shahid zulfikar ali bhutto uh, where by he emphasized so much on education and learning and once he came to our institution sindh agriculture university tando jam which was a college at that time and he spoke in local language sindhi language and said my only request is that whatever you are studying spend one more hour on that because the future is competitive and without being competitive you will not grow so those are the words i think we should Uh, keep in mind and uh, looking at the current uh, dynamism particularly in uh, technology uh, we uh, pursue uh, our uh, uh, well being well ladies and gentlemen i strongly believe that uh, there is a great potential for science and technology and innovation based 
business development in our region and uh, uh, ECO or Economic Cooperation Organization region that I am, uh, uh, you know, uh, looking at the science and technology rather leading that. Uh, but particularly for Pakistan with a huge wealth of human resource, and uh, it can, but it can only be realized with an adequate investment in the human resource to strengthen our research and development capacity and capacity to innovate, as uh, Madam uh, Shiri Rahman has mentioned. In the last two decades, the country has emphasized more on higher education sector, which is indeed very important. But let me say that the intake of higher education comes from schools. Thus, a greater investment is required in the schooling of our children and youth as they are the university students of tomorrow, but also the business leaders as well as policy leaders uh, of tomorrow. They are tomorrow's parliamentarians. And in the schools, they, the, the key player is the teacher, thus grooming and incentivizing the teachers is, in my opinion, the key action and much needed in Pakistan. The giant leaders worldwide uh, in technology and business have not necessarily had PhDs, but have been innovators and entrepreneurs. Thus, I strongly believe that the nation building begins at the grassroots, and we must invest in the school system. It will be extremely difficult for us to raise living standards, feed our growing populations, keep our children healthy, and protect the environment uh, if we cannot innovate and find better, cheaper, and smarter ways of producing goods and marketing them. Thus, innovation is a key to achieve sustainable development goals. And we are uh, left with just 10 years uh, for achieving those goals. The evolving design, ladies and gentlemen, of uh, Innovation Summit is responding to the needs of technology development and commercialization, particularly to the emerging challenge of COVID pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic. Therefore, I would like to take this opportunity to invite you to the session we begin after this inaugural, uh, which is entitled the Post-COVID-19 Reorienting STI Cooperation Amongst the Belt and Road Countries uh, that we are hosting. The ECO Science Foundation is hosting that uh, right after this inaugural session. And we will be joined by global thought leaders in their respective fields to discuss as to how we can better respond and build back together better and is stronger with the STI cooperation among the Belt and Road countries. Gentlemen and ladies, dear friends, we must acknowledge that it is extremely important for us to translate the research done at the universities and r and organizations into marketable products and processes uh, and engaging the end users at the planning stage is a key thing uh, for your research to be commercialized or uh, taken up and the summit is an excellent platform to bridge the gap between academia and industry and i believe these summits provide an enabling environment to all of us to share our ideas and experiences and develop innovative solutions to respond to the diverse challenges that we are facing today. I'm confident that the Innovation Summit will grow further, particularly in other ECO member countries uh, outside Pakistan. Um, ECO, uh, as you know, is an intergovernmental organization of 10 countries. And we'll, in the next session, we will have more introduction of the organization. Uh, but uh, uh, particularly with a vision to harness the great potential of the region. And I assure you that ECO Science Foundation will continue to fully engage and participate in such activities to support the research and development, promote science, technology, and innovation, and STEM education in Pakistan and the entire ECO region and beyond. And using our international connectivity, we can uh, actually support the initiative a lot. I thank you all very much and uh, all the best with the remaining uh, summit. Thank you. Now, I'd like to invite Mr. Hans Holzhacker, 
who's the chief economist at Carrick China. Hello, everyone. Uh, Salam alaikum. Uh, first of all, uh, let me uh, thank you uh, very much for inviting me in such an uh, interesting, highly interesting and, and important summit. And let me join the congratulations for organizing uh, such an event. Uh, I would like to share uh, a presentation with you, a short one. Uh, however, I'm, my screen sharing is disabled, so please <laughs> allow me to come forward with my presentation. Dear host, can, can you Dear host, can you let me share my screen? Thanks a lot. So, no, it's still disabled. <laughs> okay, I, I, I will I will talk uh, about I want wanted to say this out having the screen or can I still have it? No, <laughs> okay. Uh, so that, uh, first you, uh, uh, you might have not heard about uh, Karak Institute. Karak Institute is an intergovernmental organization of 11 uh, countries. Uh, including the five Central Asian countries, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Georgia, Azerbaijan, and the People's Republic of China. Uh, and we are here to promote uh, the cooperation uh, among these countries, including uh, in innovation and, and economic uh, success. Uh, as speakers before uh, highlighted, there are a, a bunch of new uh, technologies around in the world. And these technologies are about uh, to change uh, production, life and the world uh, in general. And digitalization is playing a major role in this. I will not run you through all the technologies like uh, Mr. Bichevani made named uh, already. Uh, several of them. Uh, it ranges from artificial intelligence to through e-government, cloud computing, uh, climate tech and data. Uh, in, in the field of digital technologies, but we have also innovations in health and biological technologies uh, and in energy and material technologies and in several others. Uh, the impact of these uh, new technologies. So let me just run you through. So this is just my name and the name of the uh, of the presentation called COVID-19 Innovation and Megatrends about the Carrick Institute. I told you already uh, the new technologies I told you right now. Uh, and now I want to come to my point about the impact on globalization. Uh, of the new technologies, and they are in opposite in terms of production and in terms of uh, services. So the new technologies and especially digitalization allow in the production sphere a rebundling, nearshoring, insourcing. So uh, a concentration of production in the domestic market, uh, which is a, a kind of a opposite trend uh, to what we have seen uh, through many decades now. This is completely different uh, in terms of services. So in digitalization of services allows unbundling, offshoring, outsourcing, 
and so uh, services are being much more internationalized than they used to be before. This results uh, in, in the trend that uh, tangible goods and tangible assets, the trade, the global trade in tangible goods, tangible assets and so on is stagnating. Uh, intangible is growing. Uh, so trade in goods is stagnating since, let's say, 2010. Uh, traditional foreign direct investment is st stagnating since 2010. However, uh, globally, however, uh, trade in, in services is growing fast. The COVID-19, and everyone is under impression of the COVID-19 right now, so let's talk about the relation uh, be between uh, innovation, mega trends, and COVID-19. And COVID-19 basically accelerates all underlying uh, trends. And uh, the, the most vi visible one is that we are going more digital in across, basically across all industries. And here it, it, it's a survey uh, it's U.S. related, but it applies to the world in general. And you can see uh, the, the, the dark uh, black. These are new new customers going digital. And below there, the blue bars uh, are new employees uh, going remote. So you see we have really an, an acceleration of these trends by COVID-19. Uh, some of this will be reversed. Uh, as soon as we hopefully uh, get better control over the virus. Uh, however, uh, quite a lot of this will stay forever. Uh, the COVID-19 is also uh, accelerating that foreign tangible classical foreign direct investment uh, is lower now, has become muted. Also, this will reverse uh, probably done to some extent, but not completely. And COVID-19 reminded us how much uh, CO2 we are producing. And you see there was uh, quite a drop uh, due to confinement. Uh, and, and also this will be uh, reversed. However, we need to do uh, everything uh, to get climate change under control. Uh, shortly about where are the CARIC countries, the 11 CARIC countries uh, standing in, in the, on this. In, in terms of di digitalization, uh, the ones on the left-hand side uh, of the chart uh, need to catch up uh, quite a lot, uh, including Pakistan. Uh, the left-hand side shows uh, mobile subscriptions per 100 inhabitants. Uh, actually, some of the, these, these countries are quite developed. However, the picture is not as good if we look at more uh, basic uh, business uh, applications of digitalization, for example, fixed broadband, uh, even for households. Uh, is less developed than mobile phones. So there is a lo lot of catching up needed. Uh, I, I said before that trade in services is globally growing. However, this is not the case for the CARI countries. Actually, in the CARI countries, trade in services is stagnating uh, since 2012. Uh, in terms uh, of CO2 emissions and thus contribution to uh, climate change, uh, some of the CARI countries do quite well. However, especially the oil and gas producers uh, produce a lot of uh, uh, CO2 emissions and there is a lot of uh, action needed in this field as well also in order to adjust to the decarbonization of the world globally. 
So this brings us uh, to policies and action needed uh, for meeting the evolving new challenges and opportunities which are accelerated, as I mentioned, by COVID-19. Uh, so there are main, I have main, uh, mainly three targets in, targets in mind. Uh, countries need speeding up digitalization, the current countries, as shown before. Current countries need diversifying into new segments of international value chains. Current countries need speeding up own grading, greening and coping with international decarbonization. And to achieve these uh, actions are needed in quite a lot of fields. And I list here some of them and uh, education was already mentioned by all predecessing speakers. We need also the reform of national innovation systems. We need a new di digital infrastructure, incubators and techni techno parks also already mentioned. Uh, legislation policies appropriate for non-equity modes uh, in, for international governments. So some move away from classical foreign uh, direct investment only, uh, e-government, fintech, new tax legislation, a whole set of greening policies. This was my main message and once again, uh, congratulations for the summit and I'm looking forward uh, to, to learn a lot and have interesting uh, discussions. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu Alaikum. Uh, at the outset, I congratulate the Institute of Research Promotion, its partners and organizers on holding this Global Online Innovation Summit 2020 to promote commercialized technologies related to COVID-19. Indeed, this event is being organized at an opportunity opportune time when the world is facing pandemic COVID-19 and demands something innovative to get rid of this pandemic. Uh, many countries also experienced the second wave of COVID-19 uh, by the grace of Allah and immediate and appropriate measures adopted by our government, the pandemic is phasing out in Pakistan. Uh, invention to innovation always brings changes in the skills, expertise, way of life, and dealing more suitably our daily affairs. The shift from working at home to working in factories in the early 18th century brought a new system of working. Flying shuttle was a very successful innovation in weaving. Spinning technology needed frequent development over the next 50 years before weaving experienced further significant changes. Uh, similarly, steam engines were much more efficient in the 1760s and 1770s, giving huge savings on fuel. Other improvements meant system steam engines could replace water and horsepower in various industries, allowing factories to be built anywhere. Innovation also, also allows organizations to stay relevant in the competitive market, it also plays a vital role in economic growth. The ability to resolve critical problems depends on innovations. The purpose of innovation is to develop new ideas and technologies that increase productivity and generate greater output with the same input. Technological advancement and increased productivity mean significant changes for careers today as well. The world economy could more than double in size by 2050 due to continued technology-driven product improvements. According to the New World Economic Forum report, nearly 133 million new jobs may be created by 2022, while 75 million jobs are displaced by automation and robotics. Manual low-skilled jobs and middle-income roles such as accountants, lawyers, and insurance clerks are the ones that will be affected the most over the next 
decade. Developing countries depend on innovation as new digital technologies and innovative solutions create considerable opportunities to fight sickness, poverty, and hunger in the poorest regions of the world. One of the critical requirements for entrepreneurial success is the ability to develop and offer something unique to the marketplace. Over time, entrepreneurship has become associated with creativity, the ability to develop something original, particularly an idea or a representation of an image. COVID-19 has required unprecedented responses from all countries. Such has been the speed and severity of the pandemic that few countries have been afforded the luxury of following traditional processes of testing and trialing new technologies, processes, and medicines. Countries that have delayed their response to COVID-19 seem to be faring worse. The lack of time and resources available to respond to the crisis, as well as the need for rapid scaling in every context, has led to an explosion of innovative responses. There have been some extraordinary moves in pakistan we are refitting the rolling stock of trains to become hospitals wards for patients with covid 19. china constructed a thousand bed hospital only in 10 days distilleries have provided to produce millions of bottles of hand sanitizers Nations that uphold free choice movement and competition have suddenly foregone many fundamental values and privileges. For example, in addition to enacting widespread social distancing measures, the UK in a landmark deal has commissioned all of its private sector hospitals for use by the National, National Health Service at cost expanding capacity by 8,000 beds. These responses bear the hallmark innovation that is doing more with less for the many and being creative, innovative, and resourceful in the face of institutional voids and resources constraints. This has been the really reality of the experience of many low and middle income countries even before the COVID-19 pandemic, which is why so many innovations emerge from these contexts. There are many underlying less lessons. Necessity is the mother of innovation and human beings can be resourceful, particularly in a crisis in coming up with innovative solutions. We know almost 138 countries have signed MOUs with China to be a part of the Belt and Road Initiative. This initiative is going to cater to two-thirds of the world population, one-third of the world GDP, and one-third of the world's services and goods. The Export-Import Bank of China will finance over 1,000 projects. Belt and Road Initiative has six trade corridors spread mainly over Eurasia, but also touching the borders of Pacific, North, and East Africa. China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, that is called CPAC, has estimated investment uh, around US $62 billion, whereas total estimated investment in BRI projects is approximately going to $4 trillion. Our country needs researchers of that kind who can grab the opportunities coming out from the new global economic activities. We do not need clerks, we need business innovators who can adjust themselves, not only in Pakistani markets, but also in the international markets. Our business schools should research about the success stories of the turnaround of the Sikh economies around the world. We should groom our students about the techniques as to how we can get out of the IMF program forever. This goal can be obtained only when the industry and academia work together in a new way. The post-COVID era would be very different from the pre-COVID world. I believe that there 
are many changes we are going to witness very soon the way of living on the planet would be entirely different and seemingly online business technology is going to take over almost everything sorry uh, in the last but not the least i on behalf of the business community extend my services to you the business community is ready to work with our academia to strengthen our youth and our future for the prosperity of pakistan and pakistani people i once again congratulate the organizers of this summit for holding such a useful online event on this very uh, much needed cause thank you very much now i'd like to invite commodore arshad retired hilal e imtiaz military director pakistan maritime science and technology park bahria university assalamu alaikum and very good morning on behalf of the rector bahri university i take this opportunity as a great honor to welcome all of you to the annual online innovation summit 2020 organized by institute of research and promotion it is indeed a distinguished honor to have dr shiri rehman amongst us we are indebted for her kindness to have graced today's session of summit as the chief chief guest ladies and gentlemen i am pleased to apprise you that at bahri university we foster the culture of academic excellence applied research and innovation and in this process we endeavor to achieve highest standards in every sphere of activities therefore we at bahria are evolving in a way that we provide conducive platform for conducting quality research to our students our collaboration with industry ensures that we are aware of the industry problems and we are able to provide solutions to the industry problems the broader vision of the innovation summit is to provide active researchers and organizations a platform to catapult from innovation to invention this will help the participants organizations to adopt innovative strategies and technologies which are beneficial for socio economic growth of the country the endeavor is to produce innovative and cutting edge solutions to socio economic problems the forum provides a unique opportunity for a collaboration between various stakeholders including funding agencies and investors discussion on industries problems and associated technology and business solutions is another vital facet of the summit the innovation summit 2020 also entails a dedicated session related to the blue economy Bahria being the only maritime university of Pakistan is promoting maritime education for which school of maritime sciences is already established as you are well well aware 2020 is being celebrated as year of blue economy as a flagship project of the year of blue economy Bahria university is establishing Pakistan maritime science and technology park ground breaking of which is planned on 24th of september 2020 PMSTP will act as a catalyst to jumpstart knowledge driven national blue economy it will be a platform for government academia and industry collaboration and its innovation ecosystem will provide business and technology solutions for the emerging disciplines ladies and gentlemen innovation summit 2020 includes different sessions pertaining to diverse technologies such as technologies for health and life sciences technologies for art and social sciences technologies for chemicals and materials and technologies for food agriculture water and livestock moreover a startup competition is also arranged in which students from prestigious universities showcase their products in the end i would like to express my gratitude to senator dr shirin rehman saiba and thank all the stakeholders from academia industry and public sector for taking out their valuable time to grace the occasion this will surely go a long way in promoting research and development in the country on behalf of the barrier university management i assure you that whatever strategies are evolved at the industry of the government travel barrier university is keen to adopt those and implement those in our own curriculum and research activities we want to be objective so that we create knowledge we create a solution for technology players and we create solutions for business players as well for which we need patronage of our industry and government alike 
Ladies and gentlemen, let us thank Allah for our liberty and the great independent country we all live in. Let's nurture the culture of mutual respect and support in accordance with the vision of our founding fathers. And let's be objective to support innovation of virtues with open arms and support each other, industries included, in the greater cause to move together towards a better future for Pakistan. Thank you very much and Allah's blessing to everyone. Godspeed to the success of the seven. Thank you and Allah Hafiz. Now, I'd like to invite Dr. Rashid Akta, Director, Ripa Institute of Public Policy. Uh, um, Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Rashid Akta. Uh, thank you, Jazakullah uh, Khair. And uh, I'm really thankful to the, our chief guest, Senator Shiri Rahman Sahib, a distinguished uh, keynote speakers from all uh, around the globe, mm -hmm. including Pakistan. And uh, I'm also much thankful to the teams uh, of uh, uh, the various partners who have dedicated to make this uh, uh, Global Innovation Summit uh, successful. Uh, let me give you a, a small uh, background uh, that uh, how we have reached uh, 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 this day for holding a global uh, uh, online innovation summit. As soon as the uh, coronavirus knocked the doors of Pakistan and uh, considering a national obligation on the part of the universities and the leading think tanks, we established a consortium in Pakistan uh, comprising of uh, uh, IRP, uh, Rifa International University, uh, Bahia University, uh, Karachi, uh, Shalkot University, and uh, Department of Economics in Karachi University. So the, the, and uh, we started uh, uh, we started discussions and various deliberations were held to assess the uh, impact of the COVID on various sectors. And obviously these sectors were like uh, food, agriculture, water, livestock, ICT, engineering, chemicals, industrial processes, business, uh, uh, health and life, science and the social sectors. And uh, in the last couple of months, uh, I think uh, dozens uh, of technical sessions were held uh, and, uh, and the sectoral analysis were done in con context with the COVID. And uh, it was a very extensive exercise which I have done. But now the encouraging thing is that uh, more partners have been uh, um, have been added to this consortium, and uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, uh, we will be in a more uh, in a in a more better positions that we may. Uh, the, um, we may evaluate the impact of uh, COVID uh, during the COVID era as well as the post-COVID era. If uh, I overview the impact of COVID in pa context with Pakistan is concerned, uh, then uh, we have to see that the corona has drastically changed the world we live. With more than 9 million cases reported worldwide, this uh, uh, virus has spread uh, about around 188 countries. In Pakistan, number of uh, confirmed such cases is more than 165,000 and uh, more than 3,000 deaths. Uh, the country's real GDP growth has contracted about 0.4% in the fiscal year of 2020 and around 56 uh, or 57 percent of the population is considered to be a socio-economically vulnerable. So, uh, and uh, out of uh, the total uh, a nation, nation's total employment labor force, which is comprises of about 62 million, uh, about uh, 24 million are agriculture workers, while 38 million are non-agriculture workers. And out of that non-agriculture worker, about 72 percent are employed in the informal sector, which is, uh, and uh, and this informal sector has been uh, hit by the corona adversely. And about uh, 15 million workers uh, have lost the job. Uh, and uh, if uh, uh, if uh, the agriculture sector is considered, the whole value chain has been severely disrupted, resulting in reduced avail availability of supplies such as kharif crops, seeds, fertilizers, and livestock feed. As a result, agriculture output produced in the upcoming months may be significantly reduced. The the virus has also highlighted the inefficiency 
and the lack of adequate health services and healthcare equipment such as uh, uh, personal protection equipments and ventilators. It has also laid bare other deficiencies with regards to the country's economic situation. Now, what is the way forward? I think uh, the way forward is that uh, uh, a holistic approach has to be adopted uh, and uh, we have to focus on reducing the spread of pandemic in the long term run. It should, uh, and we have to take steps to ensure the adequate structural reforms and adopt it that help to boost the private investment and allow country, country to achieve economically sustainability in future through uh, uh, by doing the things in an innovative manner. Where obviously, when we say, say that the innovative manner, uh, Senator Shri Rahman has rightly pointed out that uh, the innovation started from the critical thinking. And uh, how and uh, and this uh, innovation approach has to be uh, adopted in all the sectors of the economy. And the best, uh, uh, I think, strategy uh, for pursuing this uh, uh, innovation approach is uh, uh, by uh, that at least uh, uh, through the through the extensive collaboration between the, the three main actors uh, who are much responsible for. Uh, for uh, for the innovation, one is the universities and the research and development organizations. Other is the industry, which is the private sector, uh, and the third is the government. And the government has to uh, provide the conducive uh, policy environment where the uh, the various activities to be undertaken. I hope uh, uh, by the deliberations. Uh, uh, to, uh, which we are going to listen uh, during this uh, um, uh, global innovation summit will will help us uh, in addressing the various challenges which are exist uh, um, uh, in the in the various sectors uh, uh, of this country and uh, what ultimately objective is that uh, uh, these uh, innovation interventions must be reflected uh, in terms of the economic growth so that uh, and economic growth can only be achieved when the with, with a higher productivity and obviously when we are talking to talk about the if it is a higher productivity we will be more competitive and we are, if we are more competitive obviously it uh, we uh, we uh, we will be uh, 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 we will be among uh, those countries uh, uh, which are uh, which has uh, has a, a tangible share in the global economy uh, thank you. Uh, that's what I want to say. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir.